Hi, I'm Phil from Driftworks. This is my E30 M3, and that sad looking man in the corner there is Jay. <laughs> So, we have 50 minutes before we have to leave for um, the track day. We're doing it's an evening session at Donington again. It's like a full circuit one, so it should be slightly better. Um, yeah, 50 minutes. It's been a pretty busy week already this week, and we are um, down to the wire, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, Jay is down to the wire, because... Uh, oh, you can this, see the of it. Yeah, this previously was my Cartec flap paddle button controller it actually does everything on the car and has all the relays in it yeah so um it was indicators uh, headlights and uh windscreen wipers and washers and flappy paddle and yeah all activated where's that box gone oh there it is that's the outer case of the box and yeah we've been trying to basically what happened is the thing that's on the back of this, I've lost my magnets, the thing that's on the back of this has a battery in it, one of these small camera batteries, and it decided that it was going to explode and take out the Cartec controller with it. Uh, we have zero way of activating important things when it's raining, like wipers, <laughs> <laughs> and important things when you go to track days, like indicators. You're a bit fussy about the indicators. You've well, you know, I, I could maybe <laughs> stick my hand out the little window, couldn't I? I'm yeah. probably a bit big for that. But yeah, so Jay's having to jerry-rig something up very quickly, which is uh, difficult because, like he says, there's no relays in the car if there's no um, Cartec box. Um, long term we need a solution for this. I think the car, you know, we've talked about rewiring it and I've talked um, with somebody, I can't remember who it was, about uh, fitting a PDM to it and just doing stuff a bit more properly, but for now that doesn't really assist. So basically you've had to find some relays and some switches, haven't you? I found a, a flasher relay, uh, yeah. brakes for towing setup. And, yeah. uh, Another relay. We've got an indicator switch, one for each side of the car. Yeah, it's going to be a joyous thing for me to activate while I'm in excitement mode, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and yeah, as you can hear, it's absolutely pissing down outside. Um, so I'm going to preempt things and put the wets on. Um, mixed set of wets. They are 17s front and 18s rear because I couldn't get anything 17 in the width that I wanted at the back. So I'm having to run a staggered set up with an 18 in the rear. Uh, you probably saw me finishing the exhaust um, and then after that the bumper went to gases or actually the car went to gases to make it all nice. It's turned out lovely but you'll notice you can't really see an exhaust tip and that's because yeah as I said in the last video the car seems pretty loud. So what we've made if you can just about see here is a hard right turn and an additional silencer with a downturn there. Um, and it's got a brace, it's got a, um, an exhaust mount on it, and I've just done some very quick heat shielding on it just to make sure that it doesn't set fire to my new bumper. Uh, it's a lot quieter with it. Whether it's enough, I don't know. Um, I probably need to stop waffling and uh, get these wheels fitted because we need to get everything that Jay's doing, doing finished. We need to get the wheels fitted Get it on the floor, on the trailer, load it up, and head to Donington. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot the bit where this week also we've done DCT tuning with the um, with the guys at HTG. So last night I was working on the car remotely with um, Bartek from Poland, um, who was dialed into the computer attached to the gearbox in the car whilst I drove around and. We've got the latest firmware on it and a very rough tune that hopefully will get me through the track day. We didn't drive it in the rain, so God knows how aggressive it's going to be in the, in the rain. But uh, hopefully we can just get through this track day and then spend a bit more time perfecting it all. Uh, it's got a new set of clutch packs in the DCT gearbox, courtesy of Gareth um, at Howell Race Engineering. So, fingers crossed. Oh yeah, the loss of paddles means I'm just going to have to use 
uh, the gear stick there, the selector. Yeah, change gear like a real man, yeah? yeah? Except it does auto blip for you and things like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, now I really need to shut up and carry on. Indicator! <laughs> uh, yes, well done, mate, well done. minute spacer removal on the trailer it's a lot of fun but yeah we need to go now This is my traction control setting. It's one to 10, with 10 being the most aggressive traction control. And this one's actually a maximum throttle percentage, um, one to 10, 10 being 100% throttle. And I think one was something like 30% throttle. Uh, we originally used this to set up the Cyvex Torque to, Torque Map to basically send data to the gearbox controller to sort out blips and upshifts and all sorts of stuff like that but I figured it'd be uh, worth using it in this instance just to make sure I uh, don't overdo things on the first lap. James is describing his epic skids, which may or may not be on purpose. <laughs> yeah, my, uh... It my, is, um... It's certainly lively when it steps on you, isn't it? Yeah, my skills of sliding a four-wheel drive car are limited. Yeah. Um, James and I once went and did uh, ice, not racing, it was like an experience thing in Sweden, yeah. and uh, it was absolutely awesome, but the... We got handle of the rear-wheel drive car, ob, 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 yeah, but uh, 
front wheel drive I've also got the hands of because that's how we both learnt to be hooligans back yeah. in the day but four wheel drive was super confusing it took me about it was an NX rally car it took me probably like I don't know at least 15 minutes to get my head around what you're supposed to do when it yeah, slides yeah, yeah. and unlocking diffs and everything but yeah I, think I crashed that one into a snowbank you did I yeah did yeah I think yeah. we crashed a few cars into snowbanks yeah. but yeah um, that oh, it just looks like so much fun it's really good it's really good but it's so slippy out there yeah yeah so slippy yeah indeed it is and uh I didn't film the beforehand because I was stressing that I've had uh, wheel spacers off and on and back on and diff different size wheel spacers trying to get the rear wheels to not hit the arches here with the big spacers or not hit the coilovers on the inside, the coilover spring on the inboard side. Um, and there's just no recipe for it, unfortunately. So I've gone with the small shim spacers, which kind of mean that I don't wreck my arches. But yeah, it's absolutely horrible sounding. It's uh, contacting most of the way around. So uh, I did have a GoPro in. Whether it's worth watching or listening to, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I'm going to have a proper look at seeing whether I can space a coil over or something now, because yeah, it's too much. It's horrible. But the car's a lot of fun. The uh, the wets are very good. The, I'd specifically say the Michelins are very good. The handcuffs on the front. It feels a bit, feels a bit imbalanced to me. Um, it feels a bit understeery, but I guess you'd probably rather have it a little bit understeery than super oversteery. And obviously, it still oversteers when you want it to. But uh, yeah, pretty good. And I didn't get black bag for noise, so that's also a good thing. And can't see any black stains on the back of my car, which is also a good thing.
fucking car. <laughs> yeah, this, not so useful. It's like about 30% of my field of view is gone. Particularly useful down craners. <laughs> that was uh, a bit dicey. Skip forward to a warm and dry Audi with uh, the E30 in tow again. Um, yeah, that was that was so wet. Uh, I'm really happy I got to um, finally have a go with the the wets. I've had them for probably a year as a just in case, and um, you know it wasn't without its drama. <sighs> hitting the coilover spring or hitting the um, the wheel arch itself. Uh, ended up being solved with a slip-on spacer on the wheel and um, a tiny little washer that I stole off the trailer on each side just to space the bottom of the coilover lower mount outboard. Um, sorry, inboard. And yeah, seemed, it's still a tiny little bit of contact, but it meant it wasn't screeching. Hopefully it doesn't make the video audio horrible. Um, but yeah. Car's excellent, really, really good. Um, very, very happy, considering what a rush it's been to get it to this track day, which is only a track day, I could have cancelled it, but um, one of the big things is uh, you kind of need something to aim for with big projects, um, otherwise you know, they'll just never get done. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people have worked very hard just to get me to, you know, do three sessions at Donington in an evening, and uh, I'm really, really grateful for that. First of all to Gareth at Howell Race Engineering who's replaced the clutch packs in the uh, DCT gearbox. Um, that's come back to us and we've refitted that. Uh, then to Craig at Dynatalk for helping me with the exhaust and spending a lot of his personal time on Saturday particularly um, helping me. To Gaz, um, our painter who rushed through the rear bumper for us uh, which was quite a considerable amount of work, it wasn't just spraying the bumper, it's plastic welding and all sorts. Um, not forgetting Jay obviously, who although he works for me, I ask a lot of him sometimes, so I'm really appreciative. His expertise in wiring just to get me here with wipers. Diamond, um, and to Bartek for, um, from HDG, who did a last minute tune for me yesterday. Um, we were working until half seven um, yesterday evening just doing sort of a rough uh, base map on the DCT with the HTG GCU. There's a lot of a lot of letters there, isn't there? But anyway, um, it's, it still needs some work, but um, that was absolutely brilliant. It's on track, really, really good, even in the rain. Um, it's It could possibly do with being a slightly softer shift, um, specifically for rain, so I don't know whether it's worth having like multiple maps for these things, but I got around it fine, and to be honest with you, with the traction control on the um, Cybex, um, it's been set up that I can adjust with uh, a knob um, in the centre of the car. It's absolutely brilliant, loads of fun. Um, the wet tyres, I think the fronts were new and they needed some scrubbing in. They seem to develop a nice bit more grip um, in the second and third session. But yeah, the car was really quick. A um, couple of sketchy moments down Craners, but that's basically Donington for you. It's like, if you're not having sketchy moments down Craners, you're probably not going fast enough. But there was a few that were that also involved more than a third of the windscreen being completely steamed up from my point of view, um, and not being able to see Craners uh, as it sort of grew and grew the steamed up section of the window. I do have a heater blower in the car. Uh, it just needs another vent um, that will sort of point towards the centre. Um, screen but yeah absolutely brilliant um sorry for waffling on for so long um yeah i just wanted to get out of the rain and uh, get home and probably have a beer and uh, chill out and yeah thanks very much for watching thank you for subscribing um and those of you with the notification bell ticked get alerts for everything uh, please give the video a like if you enjoyed it and hopefully we'll uh, at the next one we'll see you and it'll be dry and we can go super fast again cheers catch you later